Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode of Nib Pickin'. My name is Steven and I am here to give an artist take on fountain pen reviews. Um, today I have a fountain pen from a company that I've reviewed before and I didn't really care for the first fountain pen that I reviewed by them. Uh, but this pen also seems to be quite popular with a couple of um, YouTubers that I follow that do fountain pen reviews from a more of a writing perspective. So I thought I would give it a try. It is the Fountain Pen Revolution Himalaya. This is the version two. There's a version one that's still sold on the website, um, but this is the version two, the most recent version. And um, I bought it together with the Fountain Pen Revolution Japir. And um, again, I, I didn't really care for the Japir as an art instrument. It's all right as a writing instrument, um, but it has a few things about it that seems like I will have a similar feeling about that for the revolution, but we're gonna see what happens. Um, it is an Indian style fountain pen, which means that it features an ebonite feed. They're very wet feeds. Um, this one, unlike the Japir, which I reviewed a few months back, is a cartridge converter, um, so it's got a lot of things that are different about it, and I don't know if that's gonna translate to better um, use as a tool for art, uh, but we'll see what happens. I'm gonna look at the parts of this pen, I'm gonna fill it, and then I'm going to do a drawing sample, and at the end I'll weigh in, what do I think, um, what could be improved, uh, what's the good, what's the bad. All right, let's check it out. This is the Fountain Pen Revolution Himalaya version two. Uh, in look, it's uh, somewhat similar looking to the version one, which I believe is still for sale, uh, but this is supposedly the new and improved version. This one is made of brown ripple ebonite. Uh, ebonite's got a, a long history with fountain pens. It um, was used before plastic was readily available and cheap to use. So it's a bit of a, a throwback. Um, when I unscrew this, you can see that the whole body is essentially made of ebonite except for the nib and the metal parts of the cap. Um, interesting thing about this pen, actually you can unscrew the top part here. So it's threaded, it looks uh, pretty nice. You can take the clip off, so if you're not a clip person, you can actually do without the clip and it, it uh, screws right onto the top there. So it's pretty seamless. You can actually see where it connects, but um, you know, if you want to do without the, the clip, you can. You can you can just take this thing apart. And whoops. Um, the rest of the cap comes apart here. There's a metal band across the bottom. It's very plain in its setup, but I think that it's um, it's nice for that reason. Like it's just a very simply made and simple looking pen. Um, the feed here is ebonite. Uh, I had some trouble with the ebonite feed in the last Fountain Pen Revolution pen that I used, the uh, Japir, or again, I still don't know how to pronounce that, uh, J-A-P-I-U-R, I don't even remember how to spell it, to be honest. It wasn't that satisfying of a, of a pen to work with, so hopefully this one will be better. This is also an extra fine, as it says on the front here. It says extra fine. And if I pull on it, the it takes a little bit of pressure. There we go. The uh, nib pulls out completely, and the hand cut ebonite feed. You can totally see that it's not symmetrical. It means that, that this was actually made a handmade feed, which is cool. Um, ebonite feeds are a bit wet for my tastes, meaning they put too much ink on the paper for me. Other people really love them. Um, yeah, but uh, let's let's hope for a different experience. The, the Fountain Pen Revolution sells a bunch of different nibs that you can get for this. They're all kind of swappable. Um, you can get extra fine all the way to um, broad, I believe. And then they also have two different types of flex nibs that you can have for a little extra money, not too expensive. Um, but I wasn't looking for that when I got this. So the section unscrews here, and the body is, again, is very simple. There's a converter included, 
This is not a standard international converter as far as I know. Uh, and one of the differences is because, look right here, it's threaded. So it screws right in there. Um, since it comes with the converter, it doesn't really bother me that it's a special kind of converter that's needed. From the smell of it, it smells like it might be a vegetal resin, sort of like the Noodler's pens that are kind of uh, notoriously, people complain that they, they stink or they smell bad. Personally, I don't mind the smell, um, but it's not that bad with this because it's only a small part of the pen and it's a part that's usually covered by the rest of the pen, so not a big deal to me. Um, this one does appear as though you can take it apart and uh, put silicone grease and lubricate it. Um, so it's a very, uh, it's a very fiddle friendly pen, you might say, like you can do lots of things with it, you can play around with it, you can set and reset the nib. Um, if you really wanted to, you could have a hand at carving this uh, feed to something more your liking. I wouldn't recommend that unless you really know what you're doing. But um, there's the pen, the Fountain Pen Revolution Himalaya version 2. So let's put some ink in it and see how it performs. All right, so uh, we are on attempt number two to fill this pen. Uh, we had a little bit of a mess before because it looks like when I reassembled the pen after taking it apart, uh, I didn't push the feed back in enough and uh, the ink was just running right out as soon as I filled it up. Um, so today we are using Noodler's Heart of Darkness um, black ink. Uh, I, I like this ink. I was looking for the darkest, deepest black I could find, and it turns out that I can actually uh, find a darker black ink. I've settled on Platinum Carbon Black uh, as my favorite dark black ink. I feel like that one is, is pretty um, kind of saturated with its blacks. Uh, Noodler's Heart of Darkness is a close second. I still use it a lot because I have this gigantic bottle, um, and it's got an eyedropper cap. I've got that over on the side here. This is where I hold the cap when I'm filling it. It's really the bottle's designed for eyedropper pens, so you can just drop the ink into the pen nice and easy. Personally, I don't like eyedropper pens, so I would kind of prefer this just to be a regular bottle, but it is nice uh, that I have a really a lot of ink, and I can use this for many, many, many years. I've already had it for several years, and it hasn't failed me yet. So let's just uh, see if I can get it to fill. Hopefully we won't have the problems like last time. Um, so yeah, this is just a regular cartridge converter type filling system. It seems to have worked pretty well. All right, I'm going to blot this off and we will be ready to do a drawing sample with this here pen right there looking good right well with today's pen we are going to be checking out a new kind of paper um, I think I finally saw the limits of my cheap paper um, that I used the the um, five dollar bargain bin sketchbook that I've been using on my last video uh, where I could feel that the fountain pen I was using, the Pen BBS 456, which is a fantastic pen, uh, was actually tearing up the paper and uh, it's about time to upgrade. So um, we're going to be using this Tomoe River uh, 52 grams per square meter uh, paper. It's supposed to be excellent for fountain pens and uh, I bought a stack of it in loose form. I'm going to grab a sheet of it and put it right here. And we're going to play around with this sheet and then I'm going to do a drawing sample on this paper as opposed to my normal one. I'm going to give you my first few impressions about this. Um, and we're going to do some practice marks on it. First of all, it's very thin. I don't know if you can see my fingers through this sheet, but it almost feels like a vellum, like the kind that architects um, and designers use for doing renderings, like a kind of a vellum sort of feel to it. And it feels so thin, I kind of wonder if this is gonna be any better than the paper I've been using, which was a bit thicker, and at least it didn't bleed through to the other side. But am I gonna get bleed through with this? I don't know, I've heard fantastic things about it. So um, I'm gonna uncap my pen, and I'm going to get right 
to it. Interesting. Okay, so here we go. Uh, I'm going to give it a few hatches. The other thing about these Indian made fountain pens is they're very wet. So I'm feeling the ink go on really smooth. The paper's got a nice, um, like a, a hot press feel to it. So it feels very smooth. It's not um, textured at all, which I think is nice for fountain pens. You don't want to wear out the nib or anything like that. And I can feel like a, a decent amount of control with the pen as it's going down. So that's great. Um, I can try doing some kind of more heavy fills with it. I can do a little box here and I'm going to shade it, see how far I get with that. I do really like this. It feels really nice. I'm curious what the other side looks like. And you can see this is, like I said, it's a wet pen, so you can see some ink blobs going down. I'm going to do three layers of hatching. Okay, I can see a little bit of buckling. So there's that, which is not great, but I'm putting so much ink on this. Curious to see if it bleeds through. I've heard that these uh, this paper doesn't bleed at all. So I'm gonna put it through a bit of a torture test to see what happens. This will be not my best art, but it's a, it's a sloppy little test. Okay, let's see the other side. All right, I'm pleasantly impressed. Um, it did buckle, the paper buckled a little bit, but I'm curious if that's gonna be the same when it's dry. I don't mind the buckling, but I don't see any ink coming through. Um, and it, it looks like I've got a little bit of an ink stain here, so it is taking a little while to dry. That's to be expected with a fountain pen, a really wet fountain pen like this one. And you have a paper that's not absorbent, so you're not getting um, spongy kind of uh, feathering effects like you do with the cheaper papers. So pretty impressed with that. I'm going to go through a torture test here. This is a brush pen. This is the Kuratake, I believe it's the number 11. Um, it puts down a lot of ink and I'm just going to see, I've never been able to, to have a sketchbook that had the ability to put down brush pen levels of ink. So I'm going to, I'm going to do a little drawing of a tree. You can see definitely that there's a lot going on here with this. There's a lot of ink going down. It's taking it pretty well. I don't see any feathering, which is really good. I'm not going to go into too much detail with this tree, just going to try and give it a, a decent go. All right, and then just going to put some heavy dark shading down here. I'm really just going to drop some ink onto this and see if it can take it. If it can, this will be my paper. I'm going to figure out how to make a sketchbook out of this. Maybe that's another video. Let me know if you'd like to see a video of me making a sketchbook from scratch, because I've never done that before. Um, so, sounds like a fun practice. So here's my little tree. I'm gonna shade and give it a little bit of, of this texture, which this looks kind of bad, but it's okay. This is just for my practice. All right, now I'm gonna turn it over, moment of truth. This actually didn't buckle as much as the um, other one that I can see. That would be fun to be able to do brush pens in a sketchbook. Love it. All right, uh, turn it over, moment of truth. Keep coming up with ways to try and fix this ugly drawing. Okay, um, here we go. Wow. Okay, that is impressive. Now you can see dark lines on the other side, but that's because the paper is being translucent. Like you can definitely see, if I move it up close, you can definitely see 
that it's not bleeding through to the other side. So really cool. I'm a big fan of this paper. It's the um, Tomoe River, 52 grams per square meter. Um, and it's the cream color. They sell a white color too, but I thought the cream had a little bit of elegance to it. So uh, we're gonna do today's drawing on that paper. Excited. Okay, so um, I'm just gonna throw this out there right away. This pen is not ideal. Um, there's a lot of things that make it hard to draw with. So I'm gonna deal with those points first. Uh, first of all, it is very, very wet. The ebonite feed puts down a ton of ink on the paper, uh, which limits kind of what you can do as far as detail is considered. And if you keep in mind also that this is an extra fine nib, but to me it feels like a medium, which is super, super wet. That's like two steps beyond. And I think, yeah, I, I made a little smudge on the bottom and you can kind of see it, I had to cover it up. Uh, that means that uh, it took a really long time to dry. Um, and so that may have something to do with the paper, so I should mention that as well. The paper is, um, is very nice, but I'll get to that later. But the other thing that affects it is, uh, or my opinion of it, is this, the portability factor. Um, I had a problem with it burping ink, so I'm afraid to kind of take it places. But uh, I did this little drawing with it, and surprise, I actually really like this pen. I think it did a good job on the art and it has a different, I think one of the things I like about it is that it's kind of a challenge. Like it's not easy to use. Um, so it was fun to play around with. Um, if you're like an urban sketcher and you wanna have a bunch of um, portable pens that you can just take anywhere, I wouldn't recommend this. But uh, I think it's a winner as far as um, how fun it is to draw with. So that's my opinion. And we are back. After uh, playing around with this pen, I have to say, I'm surprised to say it considering how this pen uh, didn't really work for me in the form of the Japir. I do like this pen as an art tool. I do enjoy drawing with it. Some of the reasons that I enjoy it are actually, um, because it's a little bit of a challenge, it is a wet writer. Um, it isn't the kind of thing that you can carry around in your pocket. Um, it's very loose with the ink. Uh, and even for an extra fine, the lines are a little bit thick. Um, but I found that with the right kind of paper, and I really do also appreciate uh, the Tomoe River paper, um, it, it worked really well with this pen, which is a little bit misbehaving. Uh, when it comes to how much ink it puts down. It was fun to play around with and it was really smooth. Um, and I do really enjoy the, uh, the feeling of the ebonite when I hold the pen. It's like holding a piece of history. Ebonite's kind of a, a material they don't make pens out of very much anymore, but it was quite a big deal way back in the day. Um, so, it's, it's fun to have something like this. It's not too expensive. I wouldn't recommend it as a first fountain pen. I also wouldn't recommend it as an only fountain pen. To me, this is not an everyday carry pen uh, because there's a lot of things about it that, um, that make it difficult to take it places. So I would recommend this as a second or third fountain pen, or if you're really into that retro feeling, this uh, fountain pen Himalaya really hits the spot for me. So I think this one's a winner. Um, that's it for my video today. That's it for, um, for a little while. And uh, thank you so much everyone who watches, listens and, and comments on my videos. Keep doing that. If you have never, if you have not subscribed to this channel and you enjoy this content, please click that button and subscribe. It helps me a lot. Um, and we will see you next time.